since World War II, there has not been another tragedy that resembles the scope of the Holocaust in any way, but there are many cases in which the world stands on the side and does not prevent genocide and does not prevent mass murder. It can be Biafra or Cambodia or Rwanda or Sudan. We do not have a date set aside to commemorate what happened in 1967. I, I think uh, there's no need for that because you'll be reopening old wounds. It's not the duty of people who are not involved to deny the pain of people who are involved. In Nigeria, there's this big embargo about Biafra. You must never talk about Biafra. We have to move on. You have to forget. You have to just move on. Forget about it. But it's not the duty of people who are not there to forget. If the people who suffered want to forgive and forget, it's their prerogative and they can do that at their will. Well, Steve Jobs, has anybody read his autobiography? Yeah, he stopped going to church because he read about the Biafra War. He said, if Christians can do that to people, why should I worship that God? I don't agree with him, but that's his view. He felt so bad about the war. Um, Bernard Kushner, former French foreign minister, remember him in Kosovo, digging every last bone to understand what happened in Kosovo. But where did he start? He started in Biafra. He was there as a Red Cross volunteer. He resigned from the Red Cross. He said, we can't be impartial in such a situation. He founded Medicine Son Frontier, MSF, because of the Biafra situation. And that's what Biafra did to him. John Lennon returned his MBE to the Queen because of the Biafra war. Uh, as a protest against violence and war, especially Britain's involvement in Biafra, which most of the British public aren't aware of, because all the press, TV and radios slant all the news from Biafra. All the stuff I learnt on Biafra from journalists off the cuff folks is a different story. And I began to be ashamed of being British. And I'm a patriotic nationalist, if the truth will out. And Yoko can vouch for that. I'm always fighting about what Britain invented radar and what all the different things we've done. But every day I just began to worry a bit more about it. And I was going to send the MBE back anyway. I could have done it privately, but the press would have found out anyway. He would have been here a week later instead. Less impact. Jimi Hendrix was playing concerts to raise money for the children in Biafra. He was raising money to feed people like me. I would have died if those flights hadn't come in. 3,170 flights in three years that came in with all the food we wanted because there was no way to feed Biafra. And of course, part of the war strategy was to starve and kill everybody. I can't even. He had all the awards from here, CBE, MBE, everything, right up to the knighthood. He returned all of that to the Queen because of the war. If you came away from the, some of the earlier tragedies of the Biafran War and, and some of the wars in Africa and the AIDS things I photographed, uh, there, there wasn't enough darkness. The next piece uh, is also by Alex Baranowski. It's called Biafra, and this was actually written for a documentary which just came out at the beginning of this year. The documentary is called McCullen, and it's about the very famous war photographer, Don McCullen, who traveled around the world over the last 30, 40 years, taking the most extraordinary photographs, mostly of war-torn areas. And Biafra was a former uh, province near to Nigeria, where they ha had a most horrendous civil war in the 1960s. And there was a particular colony, a children's colony, which had been abandoned and thousands of children were left there to die. And Don McCullen arrived at this place in Biafra to find all these children there. And um, the children thought that he had come to save them. But the truth was he was there as a photographer. He'd, there to take, he'd come to take photos. You know, I'd walk into a school in Biafra and I would see 800 children dying. And as soon as they saw the white men coming, you could, you could you know, see they thought, there was some hope at the end of the tunnel. And what did I bring them? I brought them two Nikon cameras ar around my neck. And I saw these children dropping down and dying in front of me. And you know, we live in a world now where the media isn't that particularly interested in the real tragedy in, in our lives. They, you feel that? I'm convinced it is. And uh, it was something that he just never really got over, never really recovered from. And uh, Alex wrote this particular piece based on that, and it's in the film, which is the most extraordinary documentary. I would urge any of you to go and see it. It's just out, and it has picked up two BAFTA nominations, in fact, uh, just recently. So this is Biafra by Alex Baranowski. <laughs> 